Howdy, Cape Codders. Welcome to the Scandal Agenda. Today's date is May 16th. This is show number 18. I'd like to discuss the market quota system as it relates to the striped bass fishery. And I have here a copy of The Fisherman, which is published in New York. And I will be doing a little uh, commentary on uh, uh, the striped bass, game fish or not. Now, this is an article written by Captain Bill Smith. And I'll read a few paragraphs and then make comments as I go. Unless you live in a complete vacuum, you are aware of the movement to make striped bass a protected game fish, which would ban the commercial harvesting and sale of Atlantic striped bass. This would, in essence, make striped bass fishing a recreational sport. For this reason, bringing striped bass under game fish control is a contentious issue which brings heated debate among those that support this move and those who want the status quo. All right, right off the bat, I think the public wants excellent fishery management, which to me, in my opinion, would be found neither with uh, more contention with uh, the game fish status of the striped bass or the status quo. So I think there's always uh, other options, which the market quota system should be seen as um, the best option for fishery management from a public perspective. So there are not two sides to this debate as far as I see it. There aren't those who want the status quo and those who want game fish status. I think the public really needs to hear about um, a really good fishery management system that would not um, uh, discriminate commercial versus recreational. This whole fight between commercial and recreational is not good. And so with the market quota system, we do have an equal opportunity system. And whether or not you're going to catch the fish and sell it or take it home and eat it, with the market quota system, that system is blind to what you're going to do with your fish once you catch it. Now uh, the market quota system is a pay to play and so you'll be, as a fisherman, you will be purchasing the fishing rights by the pound, by the graded pound, to catch the striped bass or anything else in the ocean. All right. Um, the significance of the fishery is talked about here and I'm learning something about the striped bass fishery that I didn't know. Um, their value as a food did not catch on with the public until the late 1900s. Um, okay, so I guess we were eating a lot of codfish and flounder and other fish from the ocean. All right, here we go to another paragraph under federal controls. Atlantic striped bass are currently managed by the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, ASMFC with representation, representatives from the 15 coastal states. That's from Maine to Florida. The goals of the Atlantic Striped Bass Fishery Management Plan developed by the Commission is to maintain the striper fishery as a renewable resource by keeping the harvest of striped bass below a specific target level and ensure that there are enough breeders to maintain a healthy stock. Each state is required to establish their own regulations to achieve the federal guidelines for sustainability. While federal waters remain closed to striped bass fishing, individual states have, a very, different, have very different rules and regulations. States are free to develop regulations for fishery closures, seasons, quotas, size limits, and gear restriction in their state waters to comply with the allocations of the management plan. Well, the way my system differs from this mishmash of state regulation 
managing one species, which is not good to manage one species with uh, multiple states in control and having their own regulations. See, with the market quota system, probably one of the baselines or one of the foundational things with the market quota system is we manage species throughout its range. And uh, that would be true with the striped bass, and it may not be true with the uh, quahogs, let's say. Uh, okay, each state is required to establish their own regulations. Now, so if you go down to a southern state, they may be catching very small striped bass. And then, you know, so you have different states trying to get a bigger piece of the pie. That's another problem. Um, the other thing is with this paragraph here is um, you're trying to keep the uh, uh, total allowable catch. It doesn't say that, but you're trying to keep your, uh, uh, your landings down to a level where you have sustainability, but high enough so that you satisfy uh, the fishermen, recreational, commercial fishermen. That's very difficult. Um, and with the market quota system, I think the bar would be set higher and we'd have a lot more public aquaculture involved and we'd have a lot more scientific discernment of management uh, rules and regulations, everything from water quality to habitat, eelgrass, um, um, the regulations and, uh, and such like that. Um, stock assessment. Um, the Atlantic striped bass assessment summary was released by the National Fishery Service. I think that's National Marine Fishery Service, but maybe they changed the name in August of 2013. Um, you hear less about National Marine Fishery Service and more about NOAA. And over the years, I don't think they've done a very good job. Um, the scientists found that the female spawning stock was above the level of what is necessary to maintain the stock. See, this is the sticking point with all these, all the politics in fisheries. So they're trying to, they're, they're riding a very thin line with trying to catch as much as they can to satisfy the fishermen. And the public's losing out with this method of political-based management, I would call it. Um, so the NOAA is predicting if the current mortality rate is maintained over the next five years, stocks would continue to build. Well, they're not often right with their predictions, and they're not conservative with the stocks either. Um, and that's just their history, with National Marine Fisheries Service. See, when you're managing any species and you're kind of on the edge, you're catching as much as you can, but you're still thinking, oh, we'll, we'll be sustainable, we'll, you know, everything, it doesn't work that way. You've got to be, uh, you've got to maintain stocks at a higher level than what common sense seems you can get away with. And when you do that, you might have some big uh, bonanza years, and with these you know, cutting it close to the uh, bone here with the uh, allocations and you're allocating too much, you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to produce those big banner years. If you, if you let the stocks, and this is true with lobster, codfish, anything, if you let these stocks up higher than you might think common sense would dictate and stop trying to satisfy fishermen all the time, it's just ridiculous. You need to have um, the money in the bank if you're going to draw out the interest. And the money in the bank is your stocks. And your habitat is the money in the bank, too. Okay, proponents. Stripers Forever and Coastal Conservation Association, CCA, are leading proponents of bringing striped bass under the protection of game fish status. This would create a recreational-only fishery with no commercial sale of wild-caught striped bass. 
Supporters of this position believe that the striped bass fishery cannot support the demands of commercial and recreational ang anglers without adversely affecting the future of the fish. In other words, it's a turf battle. It, it's just endless, it's ridiculous. These groups believe that the striped bass is too important a sport fish to be exploited through commercial fishing. And they make some good economic arguments about the multiplier effect. And this has always been true with striped bass, especially that the multiplier effect with tourism and bait and tackle shops and hotels and, you know, it's, it's big. It's, it really is big. And they make some good arguments there. But, however, I don't believe in these allocation squabbles. I think the market quota system is the proper way to handle this with equal opportunity. If you want fishing rights by the pound, you pay. That money goes back into the resource. All right, another paragraph here. Millions of anglers, and by the way, these I, I've tried to uh, uh, push this market quota system on fish folk for many years, and I don't know why these uh, anglers don't get on the stick with this market quota system. It is the system to grow the fisheries, and that's what they want. They want to catch fish, and the market quota system uh, pretty much eliminates the squabbling between classes of fishermen, and it gets down to the business of making more pie, making the pie bigger through aquaculture, that kind of thing. All right, here we are. Millions of anglers spend time and money in pursuit of striped bass. In turn, this has a direct influence on the local economy along the entire East Coast, which can be measured in billions of dollars. Uh, very true. All right, down further. Game fish advocates argue that commercial fishing adds little to the economy and point out that with few exceptions, the majority of people who fish commercially eh, just do so on a part-time basis, often just to subsidize their boat expenses. So it's been this way for years, but your commercial fishermen will kind of marginalize the pleasure fishermen and your pleasure fishermen now is getting pretty hot and bothered and they're marginalizing the commercial uh, justifications for fishing, let's say. So we don't want that in a system. We don't want these squabbles in a system. And here it's under the heading of opponents. Opponents to game fish status for striped bass include commercial fishermen, seafood processors, and restaurants who maintain that wild striped bass should be harvested so that everyone can enjoy the fish. Um, also, there's a history with people fishing for many years, and uh, they don't want their history interrupted uh, in this particular commercial fishery or any other. Uh, by the way, Chatham's having a rough spell with the federal government, and I totally support Chatham to have control over their shell fishing in Chatham. As a kid, it was always true, and it was always agreed by the fishermen that uh, Chatham Waters was Chatham Waters, and Federal would not take it away, and they took it away. They're taking it away now. So um, I think Chatham wishes they never went in with the federal government and this national seashore at this point. If Chatham's going to lose its... Uh, its control over its fisheries, shell, shell fisheries mainly, and they've always done a good job there. Um, so that I'm very bothered about that. But that's uh, okay. Now, this group says that simply taking fish away from commercial businesses will do little to protect the species. They believe that only allowing recreational fishers to harvest fishers. I like fishermen. I don't like fishers. My dad had a fisher. It wasn't pleasant. He had to sit on a donut. Okay, to harvest fish is not viable conservation measure. Rather, to them, it's a way to manipulate a natural resource. It's a class war, I think. That's my comment. Um, rather, to them, it's a way to manipulate a natural resource and not sustainable management tool. 
Um, so if we in this country want to have a good fishery management system that both recreational fishermen and commercial fishermen plug into nicely, fine, we can have that. That's market quota system. Um, now the other term for the market quota system is uh, market quota system VP, value price. Fred Jennings, a Harvard economist, came up with that label. And the other label that I like the best is the sea farm system. The market quota system is the sea farm system, having to do with public aquaculture. Okay. Opponents see game fish status as purely an allocation issue that squeezes them out of the fishery. Oh, believe me. Um, um, well, there's a lot in that sentence. But there's nothing... Uh, you know, nothing cut and dried about this issue. I think there's b arguments on both sides. So what is the answer? Okay, further on here. What is not included in any stock assessment is the number of striped bass discarded by offshore draggers as bycatch. Both groups, that is commercial and recreational, see this as a wasteful practice that needs to be stopped. Now, I couldn't agree more. It just makes fishermen, any kind of fishermen, kind of sick to have a deck load of pretty much dead and dying striped bass on the deck. They've been in the net and they've come up, and now you've got to kick them out the scuppers and get rid of them. And that's food, and that should not be the case. And it doesn't help to build data either when we do that. I don't believe in that. See, these high grading issues and discard issues are one of the biggest problems with our fisheries right now. Any, any uh, dragger that gets into some striped bass and they're coming up dead, don't fishermen have honor enough to ice those fish down and bring them in and explain themselves? You know, they weren't targeting the striped bass, but, you know, here they are and you can... Uh, you know, pay the fishermen uh, a marginal amount and then make sure those fish go toward charity so that, so that they're not, you know, subconsciously targeted either. You don't want that. So, but the, the thing is, fishermen hate this business of just wasting these fish, throwing them overboard. That needs to stop. Fishermen have enough honor to handle um, a system that would let them uh, ice the fish down, bring them in, and, uh, you know, log it in. All right. What is needed is funding for research and development of the infrastructure to make aquaculture of farmed, raised, striped bass economically feasible. Now, okay, we're talking about farm-raised striped bass. That's private aquaculture. The market quota system, the sea farm system, that's public aquaculture. So I'm an advocate of public aquaculture as opposed to private aquaculture. If you're raising striped bass in pens, you're probably going to dense pack the striped bass, and it's true with the shellfish or salmon or anything else. And then the problems come up with, you know, genetic pollution. Oh, you're raising a hybrid fish, and that's going to get into the wild and pollute the natural stocks. Or you're introducing diseases by virtue of the fact that you know, these diseases may be latent in the environment, but then when they discover this dense packed uh, pile of fish in a net all crowded together eating God knows what they're feeding them, uh, they get weak fish, the fish get weak, and they get diseased, and then that spreads to the uh, wild stocks. And there's all kinds of problem with uh, private aquaculture, and that's why I strongly favor the market quota system with public aquaculture on a grand scale. So, um, we need to use our noggin about uh, the uh, uh, public aquaculture versus private aquaculture. Public aquaculture is the way to go. This fishery would be the ideal demonstration project for the market quota system because you guys down there in Chatham who have been bassing for years and know how to catch the bass, well, they have a right to piece of the pie, I think. 
And, um, you know, it's pretty much a commercial sport for them, too. It's part of their way of life. And I'm sure they give away striped bass to the community. And, you know, that's sustainable to me, having a commercial fishery. So I'm for a commercial striped bass fishery. But I don't think we need to pick and choose between and set the two against each other, the uh, commercial versus recreational. I don't believe in that. If we put the total allowable catch for striped bass on the table and we do it in a way that makes sense so that we're not catching foot-long striped bass anywhere on the East Coast. And the market for the fishing rights produces a pretty good-sized kitty or enterprise account. Now that money is then used for public aquaculture, for habitat improvements where the uh, striped bass spawn, and for your marine labs, that's aquaculture where you got people that are are trained and in the business of uh, raising up these striped bass. Uh, these are the people that want to be the, your managers of the fishery, not the politicians and the fishermen getting together in a room and all this business of uh, all this consternation, you know. Uh, it's just not good. And the market quota system is the system to end an argument. This kind of uh, behavior is not good, these fights between commercial and recreational. And lastly, it says marine businesses, including guide services and tackle shops, as well as destination travel by anglers, would grow with an increase in the quality of the fishery. Um, all right, I think that's in the angler's context, the quality of the fishery. So I, uh, I love this magazine. It's not something I have read on a regular basis, but I'm going to start reading this fisherman magazine. That's very good. And there are other, that was the April 2014. Now this issue here is the May 2014. Look at that. That is a fluke. Now, with the striped bass going south and only available to, um, let's say, anglers to catch for free, then probably one of your next fisheries to go south and only available to anglers would be your fluke fishing, because fluke fishing is a great fishery for anglers. Look at that fish. I mean, is that some kind of photoshopped uh, thing there? Um, look at that thing. Oh, I wish I could catch that fish. I caught one squid the other day. One squid. <laughs> These uh, oriental people were out fishing me tremendously, and a kid caught 10 squid to my one. Um, so I got to learn how to jig squid. <laughs> All right. That's it for striped bass. Aquaculture can bump up the striped bass. We got the people, we got the recipes, National Marine Fisheries Service down in uh, Connecticut. We certainly have the people that know how to bump up a fishery such as striped bass fishery. And I did meet the guy down in Milford at one of the seminars, at the Shellfish Seminars. He's the guy that wrote the book on bringing back the striped bass. It was an honor for me to meet him. I forget his name. That's embarrassing. But that was a great honor in my life as a fisherman to shake hands with him. So uh, bringing back the striped bass, according to him, was a four-part process using aquaculture, fishery management, Habitat and water quality, and I copied that with uh, the bringing back the bay scallops too. This guy had the uh, had the basic plan uh, uh, in order, and the striped bass was brought back. Now to bring it back up to where it should be, and not these well sustainable levels, make the fishermen happy. That's baloney. It should be 10 times the amount of fish, striped bass, that we have now. And uh, we can easily do that using the sea farm system, the market quota system. So if there's any anglers out there listening, I can go on your blogs and have discussions with you folks about how this would work. Commercial fishermen are not interested in paying for fishing rights, which uh, uh, that's what I've found over the years. So they just turn right off on the fishery management system called the market quota system. 
All right, that's it for that. I've got a few minutes left in this show. I'm going to get into um, transportation systems. I'm <clears throat> interested in doing some uh, Cape Cod uh, Regional Transit Authority uh, research and development style work with possible uh, bus systems meshed in with the taxi systems. Something I did on Nantucket was uh, um, a presentation. This was my third year in a row presenting. This is January 27th, 1998. Nantucket Regional Transit Authority meeting. Steve Scannell route presentation. So for three years, I worked on that and tried to perfect a bus route system. Um, and the planning board found that my route systems had 20% better population density coverage. And I needed a few changes made. A couple little stretches of road had to be paved. The efficiency would have gone up and um, there would have been a, um, a, probably a doubling, and Nantucket had great numbers for the, uh, the buses. I used to drive for the Nantucket Regional Transit Authority for three seasons, summers. Um, with a meshing of your taxi and the bus. So if you picture yourself calling for a taxi, and that call is to make a connection with the bus maybe a half a mile or a mile away. And uh, so that would, be, that would be the thing to bump up the numbers of the Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority is to change the system to a system that dovetails a uh, semi-public taxi system that uses your taxis, kind of chase the bus around, pick up and drop off from the bus, and then um, so what you'd have would be a greatly expanded ridership because people that walk that are on the bus route are X number of people. But then if you expand that out using taxis as a feeder, both from the bus and to the bus. So if you picture yourself on the bus on Nantucket or Cape Cod and you have a card and that card identifies you as, and this is my RTA card, uh, it's a Charlie card, and I recommend these. It's got my picture, and the bus knows when I get on the bus. And that's good for disabled people. Um, that's another story. But So you get on the bus, and then you push, I'm going home by a taxi, and therefore a taxi will be waiting for you. Okay, we can work, we're going to work on that. Thank you for watching the Scannell Agenda. Thank you, Cape Codders.